Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Dylan here. We have a big update from Mike Pence that you don't want to miss. He came out and exposed the truth, but we have a lot to cover with Donald Trump as well as Hillary Clinton and we're basically exposing what's taking place inside the Biden administration. So thumbs up the video. Before we jump in, we're reading from the Bible because it is so, so important. Amen? Comment amen, and I will heart your comments. That's what we've been doing lately. Let's try to run up all the amens. Everybody in here, comment that down below. And let's read from the Bible. You can close your eyes if you'd like. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen, 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 times a thousand. That's from Isaiah 9, 6. My friends, the government will be on God's shoulders. Keep that in mind right now. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So if you have any anxiety, pain in your heart, keep in mind that God is the Prince of Peace. So if you need some peace and clarity, go to church, read the Bible, pray, do what you need to do to get closer to God. Go out in nature, go to the beach, go to a lake, go to the mountains. If you go to your bedroom, wherever it is, your special place, I mean, God is everywhere. That's the beauty of it. So, you know, you can do it. Pray to God while you're uh, doing the dishes. Where, where's your favorite place? I just went to church last night on Wednesday. I've actually almost been going almost every single day because Sunday we had our church. Tuesday had morning prayer, praise and worship. And then last night we had another praise and worship at another church I go to sometimes. So... Um, yeah, it was beautiful. We all gathered together and there was a, you know, several hundred, several hundred of us and I am in California. So I know a lot of you guys think California is like liberal state. It is, but there, there's also a lot of conservatives where I live. And, um, basically, um, our, we all gathered together and praise God. And it was beautiful. So it's just, and it was a good reminder that like God God, there's a lot of people in this together. You're not alone, okay? So Mike Pence, he just came out, my friends, and he said this. He's basically going after Trump. This man is the absolute worst example of what it means to be a brother to somebody. And this is why I will not be voting for Pence. Who are you voting for in 2024? Because Trump picked Mike Pence to be his uh, running mate, and now, listen, and then after four years in office together, Mike Pence is like, Trump, I was supposed, we're supposed to be brothers for life? Because I don't know about you, but if I pick another man, I understand if it's a woman, because women are, I'm sorry to offend all you guys, but women love drama. Honestly, it's probably our fault, so <laughs> don't blame you guys. But if it was a woman I picked as my VP, I would be like, yeah, you don't want to talk to me anymore. You got something against me. I probably did something wrong. I probably don't even know what I did wrong, but I did something wrong. But if it's a man, a man to man, bro to bro, and he's like, yeah, I don't like you anymore. I'm going to go talk bad mouth about you after I picked you to be my, it's basically like if I got married and I had my best, I chose my best man. And then after the wedding, he's like, talking crap about me. I'd be like, dude, what is wrong with you, brother? So Mike Pence, listen to this. Mike uh, Pence world poised for a showdown with Trump. Mike Pence told Politico, so Mike Pence is running around telling Politico, we've been waiting for this for a while. By the way, we have a free email list. You can join below, enter your email to get all my updates. Please join that if you haven't already, link below. Uh, Mike Pence said this, we've been waiting for this for a while, the former president, vice president's senior advisor told Politico. So it's not even Pence talking, it's his senior advisor. Keep your team in check, brother. Mike Pence tosses out a now well-honed line when, whenever he's asked how he would go from loyally defending Trump to throwing spears at him on the debate stage. I've debated Donald Trump a thousand times, he said in Indianapolis, just not in front of the cameras. 
Dude, you were a joke, brother. That was, uh, he said at Indianapolis had a gathering for state lawmakers at the National Conference of State Legislators here Wednesday. The former vice president was answering an, audience's, an audience member's question about how he would win over skeptical Trump backers in the first GOP debate. In Milwaukee next week, he may get that chance, one that he studiously avoided for four years of never breaking publicly with the former president. During their tenure together, Pence during one 2018 meeting went so far as to sink putting down his water bottle almost simultaneously with Trump and in one cabinet meeting praised Trump once every 12 seconds for three minutes. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a brother to me. I have nothing against brotherhood. I think brotherhood is honestly like the strongest bond you could have um, and for, for men. And I, I don't know about women, about sisterhood. I, I, you know, I think it's, I think there goes to, goes to show something about sticking along with people of your own gender, your own sex, because men and women, I don't even know if you can be, I mean, I have many female friends, um, but I think I'm different. I think I'm a lot different than like most guys and girls, guys and girls when they're friends, it's like, you can't, you can't relate on a lot of things, but man to man, you can relate to a lot of things. Woman to woman, you know, I know a lot of you ladies out there got a lot of lady friends. Maybe you don't, it's okay. I'll be your friend, <laughs> okay? If you don't have any friends, Dylan is your friend, okay? We can be friends. Somebody commented, Dylan, can I adopt you? I'm like, I already have a great mother, but I'm, I'll be happy to be your friend. <laughs> Somebody said, Dylan, you're so sweet. Can I please adopt you? I'm like, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna take me to Disney World? What comes along with that? Um, if you do wanna support my show though, you can sign up below to the link at uh, thepatrioticjournal.com or a Patreon link, I'll have that too. Um, or you can become a channel member. All those links are below if you wanna help support me um, in getting this show out there. If that is, former President Trump has the courage to show up. Pence basically called him out and said, "Trump, if Trump has the courage to show up, it's almost like they're getting ready for a boxing match. So Mike Pence said this, he goes, we unveiled a plan to not just deal with inflation broadly, but also to end the war on energy restore energy independence, which we achieved in the Trump-Pence administration, and to reclaim our role as the number one energy producer in the world. Listen to this, my friends. Here we go, ready? Well, first, whatever the media is talking about, not on CBN, but elsewhere every day, what I hear is I'm traveling around Iowa and New Hampshire and across this country is that families are hurting. I mean, inflation has gone up 16.6% since the day we left office. Uh, the, the avalanche of spending out of the Biden administration launched the worst inflation in 40 years. But their war on energy has caused gasoline prices and energy prices to go through the roof. A gasoline today costs 60 percent more than it did the day we left office. And electricity rates are up 25 percent. That's why we unveil the plan not only to deal with inflation broadly, but also to end the war on energy. So what do you guys think about Pence? Do you, you think he's absolutely full of it? And then, care, yeah. and then another thing for, they said is that, I don't know about you, do you guys trust Pence? He said, for Karen Pence and I, everything begins with prayer. Our goal is to run a campaign that honors God, that honors the value that we stood for throughout our career, and also begins the process of raising the threshold of civility in public life. Look, all of that are great things. I didn't even know he was married, by the way, Karen Pence. Of course he marries a woman named Karen. So he said he wants to, you know, focus on God. He's, uh, that woman's beautiful, by the way. I just, uh, you know, for us, everything begins with prayer. My wife and I try and spend a little time every day uh, in prayer and in devotions uh, together. And, and we're strengthened by that. Okay, you know what I have to do? Call you out, Mike Pence, because if you are starting every day in prayer and you're <clears throat> such a prayerful man, I kind of hate when people, I, I'm so hypocrite because I was just like, oh yeah, I go to church every day. I don't usually, that was just because there's a lot of activities going on. But um, what Mike Pence is saying is that he's like, oh yeah, we, we're so prayerful, we're so prayerful. But then at the same time, you're going around and bashing Donald Trump, who's like supposed to be your brother. So like, I don't know, let's keep listening. But in, in, in a very real sense, I'll, uh, the scripture tells us over and over again that um, I'll be with you 
Now that doesn't promise victory. I understand that. I mean, we don't know what. You know, it would be so awesome to have a president who is quoting scripture all the time. But I don't think Mike Pence. It like, the, it's great that you're quoting scripture, but like, it's not great that you're Mike Pence. You know what I'm saying? I would prefer Trump. Just, I mean, Trump is a very prayerful man. I know Donald John Trump. He is a very prayerful man. I know he doesn't do it so much publicly because. He doesn't really like, he, he's more so just like a prayerful guy, um, him and his wife. I don't know if you, you guys realize this, but they, um, they go to church all the time. There's actually a beautiful photo of them uh, kneeling together. I'll just show you guys real quick. Real, real quick. It's kind of blurry, but you guys, you guys can see, you guys can see what's going on here. Trump and Melania, or Donald Trump and Melania Trump are, um, they're kneeling before before God. It's not so cool. Here's another one really, really quickly. And it's like, they're not doing this to be like, oh yeah, I'm a prayerful guy. We start every single day in prayer. We do this. I mean, do you guys think it's a little braggadocious that they're doing that? Maybe not, but, um, because I mean, it is good to talk about God and stuff, obviously, but there, it, there does go one, there does, there is something nice about the humility, because like, I know Mother Teresa as well, I don't know her personally, obviously, but I know she, she wouldn't like, she's the opposite of like a brag, a bragster. She just like, does, she's more of a doer. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that's Trump, Melania there. So the Biden administration, my friends, it, Joe Biden's actually being called out because of his handling of the Maui situation. So really sad situation there is that the Maui death toll has climbed to 111 each day. There's like more and more people being found and there's still possibly 1000 people still missing. So, so sad. This whole town got basically burnt to a crisp and people had to flee into the ocean to avoid getting burnt alive, which is so, so, I can't even imagine. And I actually do live pretty near the beach, so I could imagine being at the beach and all of a sudden the, the flames are coming and you're like, you have nowhere else to go, but keep in mind, there you can't tread water for that long, especially when you have so much smoke in the air. Imagine trying to tread water for like hours and you got smoke coming in your lungs. like. That's gonna, like, I can't even walk outside when it's smoky out, you know what I mean? It's like, and they tell you don't go outside, but trying to tread water like that, at least 1,100 people, uh, 111 people, including children, were killed in last week's catastrophe, and the tragedy is expected to intensify, with most of the burn zones still left to search. No one has ever seen that this is alive today, not this size, not this number, not this volume. This is the most, dev the biggest devastation in wildfires, in the last 100 years, my friends. And fires are still raging. The most destructive blaze, the 2000 uh, Lahina fire was 89% contained as of last night. So that means there's still 11% that is not contained, meaning it could even spread more and more and more. Um, Maui County Fire Chief Brad Ventura said we are spread thin. So basically, what happened was Joe Biden, um, I did some research because I like to do a little digging because I know the mainstream media doesn't like to do that. President Biden, look at this, caught. There's a whole dang article about him saying this. I don't know if he's it. President Biden caught soaking up the sun after hellish week. Could you imagine if they caught Trump doing that, he's just sitting out there. I don't know if that's Jill or not or whoever that lady is, but he's hanging out with some lady on the beach. And it's like, dude, uh, I, oh yeah, so I did some research and basically there was a study showing that from uh, January 2021 to January 2023, Joe Biden went to, to his beach, Delaware beach house, a recorded 52 times. Now those are only the times that were publicly um, documented, which I wouldn't be surprised if, if there's actually more times he went to his Delaware Beach house. But keep that in mind. So in two years, 
there's 104 weeks, right? 104 weekends. Um, he went half those weekends to, in Delaware. And then Jen Psaki saying she was quoted because somebody asked her, um, it was probably uh, Ducey or whoever that guy is, um, the Fox reporter. Why is Biden going to his beach house so much? And she said, oh, he can work from anywhere. I'm like, really, dude? Really? Like, Maui is being burnt to a crisp, and you're just like, you're at the beach. And I'm surprised that, like, he's not getting much more backlash, because could you imagine if Trump, if this was Trump? By the way, I mean, the dude looks absolutely horrendous. He looks like he's... I mean, I'm concerned for him. This is Joe Biden at the beach, dude. Put on a shirt, first of all. I mean, it's just so sad that this is our guy that we elected into presidency. We still have to, I mean, and I can't believe he's like, dude, if you're going to spend your whole presidency, like half the, literally half the weekends go or half. Every that means every other week he goes to Delaware and It's like yeah, you can work from anywhere you can work. Can you though? Can you not work from the White House Washington DC to Delaware? How long does that even take? It's a two-hour Two two and a half hour drive and you know obviously he's got his uh, secret service or whatever, but it's like What an absolute joke dude And he has the audacity to be like oh, yeah, I want to run again in 2024 Holy crap, dude. I have one more photo for you guys. This dude looks like he's on his... He looks like... I don't want to be so sinister, but... Actually, I'm not going to say it. But you guys... What do you guys imagine he's doing right now? Like, dude, this is our president? Is that... Are we... Is like, Are we living in La La Land? Fairy tale land? Not fairy tale land. We're in a nightmare. Commander in chief caught some sun rays near his vacation home in Robahoth Beach, Delaware. Yeah, and this Maui is like so sad situation, and um, Biden's like, oh, whatever, just gonna hang out at the beach and I'll work from here. Yeah, what are you gonna do there, dude? Hillary Clinton says justice is being pursued in Trump Georgia case. Um, Hillary Clinton went on TV. <laughs> to basically celebrate, um, he's, she said, Trump, uh, justice is being pursued. Hillary Clinton is like, the only satisfaction may be that the system is working. What an absolute clown fest. <sighs> All right, I'm going to end the video there because I'm literally getting so mad and I don't want to, you know, I'm still the rest of my day left. It's still the morning for me. So Anyways, let me know your thoughts on all of this. You guys are the best. God bless. Please join my free email list down below. Oh, and um, let's do one more Bible reading. So comment, amen. I stay to the end if you stay to the end of the video. And let's listen to God. You can close your eyes if you'd like. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Amen, amen, amen. That's John 16, 33. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. God literally says, in this world, you will have trouble. He doesn't say you might have trouble. He said, you will have trouble. Every single human, and keep in mind, the Bible was written, you know, however long ago. Um, I don't know if we even know when it was written, but... It said, like, it still is so relevant today. Isn't that insane, guys? That in this world, you will have trouble. You watching this video, you will have trouble. You probably already have had trouble. But God says, take heart. God has overcome the world, meaning there's hope and that there's everlasting grace. And in heaven, you can have pure peace with God. And then also, even in this world, God is saying, I have overcome the world. So God... You don't have to settle basically for the trouble that there's actually, um, what's it called? Redemption. Yeah. So, sorry, I forgot that word for a second. But anyways, thanks for watching guys. Take care. God bless. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye now.